Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer. Today, we're going to be taking a look at coal stock. It fell 17% yesterday, and I'm going to put this one. I think I have a playlist where I share like investing lessons and things. I think I'm going to put this uh, video in on that playlist. So it's just kind of uh, nobody asked for this one. This is I just noticed it, and I wanted to share a little piece of investing wisdom with everybody that I use uh, a lot that's kept me out of a lot of trouble. As always, this is not individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. So Kohl's ticker KSS uh, report, I think they reported earnings yesterday and that's why it's down so much, uh, down 17% in a single day. But if we look at this 20 year chart on fast graphs, um, I do have an, a 25% off affiliate link for Fast Graphs down in the description if you ever want to uh, try it out. Uh, they have free trials. Make sure to use that link and you can get 25% off. So this isn't a Fast Graphs ad, but since I'm going to use it here, I thought I would mention it. Okay, so here's the thing. The stock is now at, we'll call it, maybe it got slightly lower in the 2020 crash, but pretty much, let's let's shrink it and see pretty much near this all-time low, or all-time past 20 years. All right, in March 2020, it got down to about $11 a share. Now it's at 15, so it's almost there. But other than that couple days, it is at the lowest point in the past 20 years, lower than during the Great Recession, okay? So the stock price has gotten totally uh, obliterated. It is, let's just see how far off its high it is. So yeah, it was down 17% in a day, but from the late 2018, it is down over 80%. We'll call it like 85% off its high. And what I wanna show everybody is a pretty simple metric to, well, there's a couple lessons here, but I'm gonna focus on one metric mostly that can help you avoid some of the stocks that do what Kohl's has done. So first I'm gonna move the fast graph to before the pandemic because we know everything got like just crazy during the pandemic. So I want to just judge this before the pandemic because this is one that I avoided buying even though there were times where it looked like the valuation was reasonable. So if we just looked at the earnings per share at the right going into the pandemic, we can go to like, it was about 10, it had about a 10 PE. So that's not bad. And historically, this has been a really good business. They've grown even during this 20 year period. If we if we went from, well, they might've been down a little bit if we go all the way back to 2004 to starting 2020 or so. Let's take a look at it really quick. So yeah, they basically had flat growth overall during that time. But if you let up in the 20 years, like going into the Great Recession, they were showing years with like, uh, let's see, we have 25% growth in 2005, 13, 2006, 37% growth in 2007. And then coming out of the pandemic, they had a 12% growth, 13% growth, 18% growth. So they've had these periods, I mean, from uh, 2004 up until about the end of 2012, uh, earnings double, earnings per share more than doubled. So that was, you know, and that wasn't that long ago. You can still see it. Um, on the fast graph. But the thing is, let's go back to, okay, I got that set correctly on 2020. Um, what I want everybody to look at here is one, the growth after the Great Recession, really the earnings growth really wasn't that great, okay? So that's one of the things you guys see me warn about a lot. If we use, just use the basic number on fast graphs, they were growing earnings 3% a year uh, granted, inflation during this time was maybe 1% a year, uh, once you include the deflationary year of 2009. So they were growing barely above uh, inflation during this time, we'll say, growing earnings. But the problem is, once those earnings turn negative, when they're that, when they've had a period where they're just growing barely along with the economy, then the stocks can really get crushed. So we saw that it was it's down 85% since then, um, since the year before that. Now, if we go back one more year to where the earnings peaked, then the earnings growth rate's 4.48%. So that's okay, but it's still not fast. 
uh, you know, and the main reason you want to hold stocks is because they're parts of businesses that can grow earnings faster than inflation. That's one of the main benefits of owning stocks compared to bonds, right? So that's one thing to look at. We do have this, we'll call it slow earnings growth that happened during this time period. But the main metric that I want to focus on, I, I will pull up here. So this is the three years leading into, actually just after that peak, right? This is uh, mid 2019. And then this is rev three year revenue growth. So this wasn't a recession. There wasn't, this was before the pandemic. There wasn't any wider economic reason for revenues to be falling during this time period, other than it was specifically related to their business. And what you had over three years, which is not just one year, it's not just a rough year, you know, it's three years, uh, revenues were negative. Revenue growth was negative. This is cumulative. So it's just a little bit negative. But when you have that, and when you look at the earnings growth, which wasn't very strong, this is a sign for me that there's a high probability that the business is being disrupted. They've grown all they can grow, maybe, uh, or you know, consumer demand, like consumer wants, are are changing. And so when you get to a point where Kohl's is trading at 10 PE here, it looks cheap, especially when you look at it just compared to a year earlier. And, you know, actually it got down to like under a nine PE. The reason I didn't buy it was because of that revenue trend, because the revenue trend was telling the real story. Okay. And so I laid off of it and there are people that were buying it for the dividend. I totally remember that's what this white area is. What was the yield? Yield was like, and remember, interest rates are almost at zero. The dividend yield was 6%. So dividend, people were, were going crazy into this stock then. I totally remember it um, because I remember not buying it due to that revenue trend. So that is something you really want to watch out for. So if you want to buy high quality businesses that are growing, which is the definition of a quality business, it needs to be able to grow earnings. Now there are value plays and things that people can try to do. There are asset plays, you know, back in the fifties when Buffett was buying like net nets where the asset prices, the prices of that business's assets were worth more than what the stock was trading. There are ways to make money that way, but they don't really exist for a regular investor nowadays. Uh, now you need the business to grow. Okay. And you need to pay a fair price for those growing earnings. That's the now there can be turnarounds and things, but just it's so hard to, to have the knowledge to pick which turnarounds will be successful and successful in a timely manner. So I just avoid them for the, those type of turnarounds for the most part. Uh, so now we look at okay, let's say you would have bought it back there when it had the six percent dividend. Well, the first thing that would happen is the dividend <laughs> gets cut. Now we did have the pandemic during this time, so you know that could have been an excuse. But if you did buy it for the dividend in the beginning of 2020 and you held it through today, uh, the dividend got cut, it didn't get eliminated, you would be down 65%. So your dividends are not gonna pay you enough to make up for that. They just aren't. Uh, so, and I guarantee you there were people that were buying the stock back then for the dividend. I know it for sure. I could go look up a bunch of articles and show them to you if, if I really wanted to. So, and we and have the stock price bounce back as well. So. People who bought the dip here uh, were initially rewarded, but the problem is once all that stimulus money ran out, we got back to what was normal. So it just shows you, if you look at what was happening before the pandemic, no recession, no pandemic, no nothing really going on, and revenues were falling on a three-year period, that's a real sign. Now, sometimes businesses come back but usually it takes a long time. IBM has sort of recovered a little bit. They had that happen to them. Um, Wells Fargo has recovered a little bit. They had that happen. But generally speaking, man, it paying attention to that revenue on a mature business when it's not a recession has saved me from, it saved me so much money. from Because I would totally have been buying into a stock like this if it wasn't for that. 
a 10 PE, 5% you know growth, which is decent. And the stock price just before that had been trading, you know, quite a bit higher. So you knew the market. Let's go back. You knew the market was willing to pay 80 bucks a share, and it was trading at for almost half that. I mean, you can see the temptation. Actually, once it was trading half that at the end of January 2020. So you can definitely see the temptation that that looks like it could be an easy double. Uh, but the problem is the the fundamentals and the growth just weren't there. They were they were done, and we had all this choppiness before it started to get proved out. And now we're seeing the ultimate result here. Um, and nothing against like Kohl's or anything, but just as an investment, it's it wasn't a good invest. It wasn't going to be a good investment for investors most of the time, even going back in time and looking at it. So hopefully that has a couple tips there that will help help you when you're looking at. Uh, stocks that might look almost too good to be true make sure to check that revenue number a three year three years seems to be the sweet spot for me um, and hopefully you found this useful if you did hit this uh, the subscribe button hit the like button um, I have some links down for patreon links down in the description if you want to check those out and I'll see everybody later